Hi, I'm Jamie Glowacki. If you're new to my channel, I am the author of Oh Crap Potty Training and Oh Crap I Have a Toddler. I help parents use connection and curiosity in their parenting instead of coercion and compliance. Today I want to talk about intuitive eating and I want to kind of take it through the lens of both adults and from a lens through a lens with kids. <clears throat> so it was right around this time last year that I started seeing something very odd on social media. These really big accounts, including mom influencers and even nutritionists and dietitians, were saying, let's not make Halloween a big deal with all the candy, so start giving your candy to the kids now. So including those little bite-sized things that you know you get on Halloween with like dinner, you know, and with lunch, so that we make candy not so loaded. And I was like, well, that's weird like why would you give candy leading up to halloween just do halloween and then be done with halloween so i found it odd and then the next year unfolded with a lot of bizarre food stuff so it became really huge to like not moralize food nothing's good or bad and that you shouldn't even teach kids i see this you shouldn't even teach kids like what is you know what works well in their body and what doesn't and i think that's a big mistake because we have to remember that our current food landscape has changed drastically. There are thousands of paid scientists working on what's called the bliss point. This is a point in which you cannot easily stop eating food. Yes, it hijacks your brain, it hijacks your taste buds, and it makes you crave more. So intuitive eating is a premise based on the fact that most out of control eating or binge eating is rooted in restriction. If you restrict anything, anything on the market shelves, then you it, you will end up binge eating. And the cure for that is to eat mindfully, slowly, eat whatever it is your mind tells you it wants and recognize over time that certain foods don't feel so good in your body and certain foods feel fine. Now, I think that's really great as a premise except for again, how drastically changed our food landscape is. There are hundreds of thousands of people who now know that there's a food addiction and dietitians and nutritionists are very vocal about this not being a thing, which I think is awful to take somebody who knows their, their lived experience and tell them that that's not what's happening for them, I think is inexcusable. I'm a 55 year old woman. I really will die on this hill that food addiction is a real thing. It hijacks your brain and your taste buds. I know because I'm one of those people and I have experimented and I have tried to eat whatever I want and there are just certain foods that don't feel good in my body but also light my brain on fire. I crave it, I want it, I think about it all day. So I'm not, I just don't partake in those foods and I don't feel restricted. I think when we talk about restriction, we really have to talk about like, are you getting enough calories? Are you getting nutrients? Those kinds of things. Having full access to everything in the grocery store, I don't think is, and choosing not to do that isn't restriction. Those are my personal views. You, If intuitive eating has worked for you, I am thrilled. I Anything that solves binge eating or eating disorders, I think is great. However, I do think it's also important that we teach our children what food feels good in their bodies, what's for fuel and what's not. And there are always gonna be holidays and fun things. I don't think anybody needs to be, you know, sort of the food Nazi where they're bringing their own food all the time or um, don't have that or that's unhealthy. I don't think we should do that, but I do think we should teach our children what certain foods do to our body. But more importantly, I want to take the toddler crowd because that's largely my audience. When you're talking about kids under four, the idea of eating mindfully doesn't exist. These kids are shoveling it in. There is no mindfulness. To take food that could potentially hijack their brain and their taste buds at this young age isn't really fair to them and expect them to just moderate naturally. And maybe there are some people, maybe there are some kids who can have a little bit of candy every once in a while and totally be moderate. But what I am seeing in my work is a huge uptick in not just picky eating, but extreme picky eating. I'm not talking about neurodiverse kids. I'm not talking about kids with sensory issue. I'm not talking about you if you're working two jobs and you live in a food desert. I'm not talking about you. You guys, I know you're doing your best. I'm talking about your neurotypical kid, your average parent who has access to grocery stores who just doesn't realize this information, okay? So I wanna be very clear about that. I understand there are extenuating circumstances and we all do our best, but largely speaking, my clientele does have access to food and has um, 
and has, you know, a neurotypical kid. So let's be clear. Uh, but now if we start introducing this food that's hyper palatable and it, it can hijack your kid's brain and their taste buds. So then what happens is your two or three year old who, by the way, you are never going to be in a power struggle ever. These kids have wills of steel. Once they get this taste on their palate, they want more. I remember my son, I had him, you know, the sign language more. The first time he had ice cream, he went like, like it was like sign language, um, upping the volume on sign language, right? It's, it's really delicious. So yes, do I think they should have it on special occasions? 100%. I'm a big fan of the Halloween, eat all the candy till you puke, and then you get a couple of pieces and then it goes away. I'm a huge fan of that, of holidays, have the cake, have the ice cream. I'm a huge fan of making treats together with our kids in the kitchen. This isn't a no sugar message. This isn't a no treats message. This isn't anywhere near orthorexia. This isn't anywhere near an eating disorder. A hundred years ago, we did not have to manage food. We did not have calorie counters. We did not have step counters. We didn't have to manage food because it was all real food. Yes, and if you stick to as much whole real ingredients, you won't have any problems. But what I'm seeing is kids who are literally only eating Pop-Tarts, literally only eating brownies. And so what I wanna bring to your attention is that if you start introducing these, these foods in your house, all the time to try to acclimate your child to uh, the, the fact that there are sweets at holidays, you're running the risk of your child, their brain lighting up, their taste buds getting hijacked, and then throwing fits and starving themselves till they can get that food. And so I always say, I understand how picky eating happens. We get backed into corners as parents. We think like, oh my goodness, I, I really, um, they have to eat something, it should be this. But then I always say, well, how did your two-year-old or your three-year-old know that Pop-Tarts was an option, right? So we wanna keep those hyper palatable foods out as long as we can. Again, not in any sort of controlling way, but we don't want their palate to get that, that hyper palatable um, sweet taste for it because that this is a risky game. They're, toddler will will take over and again you won't win so i'm kind of sounding the alarm on this because i think right now we're in this kind of kooky world where i see it all the time on social media don't moralize food no food is bad there are foods that don't belong foods i wouldn't even call them food they're another category but they don't really do the human body any good your child their stomach is as big as their clenched fist. So, it, you know, and you know your toddler, you know how many bites they take, right? <laughs> and so it's really important to pack those bites with nutrition and not fill it with just those empty hyper palatable snacks all the time. So I know this is a hot topic. I know it's contentious for some, but I really, I don't care what you do as an adult, how you eat and take care of your body is your business, but I don't want you to be backed into a corner with your little one by exposing them to this food and then all of a sudden you've got this like tremendously picky eater on your hand who will only eat Snickers bars. You don't wanna get backed into that corner. All right, as always, if you have found this helpful and you would like more help, go to the description in this video. I have plenty of paid and free resources. As always, like, subscribe, share with anybody you might find beneficial to this information. And as always, rock on.